Hello and welcome to episode 100. Um, I thought we'd have a look at different sorts of mic preamps. The inline type that you'll use on, say, an SM7B or some of the other dynamic low output mics. Um, we sort of accept the fact that these mics are a little bit low output and if you use them with a bit more distance, as I do, then that low output is too low and you've got to get it up a bit to get the best noise response from your equipment. So most people are looking at things like cloud lifters and I personally have been using these Imperative Audio FET FP1s. Um, I, I quite like them and they're, you know, they're moderately expensive. They're not as expensive as a cloud lifter, but they're, they've always performed pretty well. But I came across a couple of Chinese preamps. One's in this rectangular case, one's in a little tubular case, like a very small version of the Imperative Audio one, actually. It's actually got a brand on it. It says Recordio. Uh, the other one doesn't have a brand at all. But I thought I'd put them to the test, and they're both cheap. Uh, very cheap, and I'll tell you how cheap at the end of the video. But they're not much cop if they're noisy, are they? So there's going to be a bit of a compromise here. How much gain are they going to provide so that you don't have to turn your preamp gains up too much um, versus how well they perform. So it's going to be hopefully an obvious one. Um, we'll probably come up with the conclusion that neither of these are much cop, um, but we might be very pleasantly surprised. If we're going to make any headway, we've got to have some sort of baseline here to actually take our measurements from. And I don't think it's going to be speech, but we'll do a little experiment just before we get going with the new preamps. Well, the one that's connected to this SM7B at the moment is an imperative audio preamp. I've had this one for a, for a while now. And uh, it's a FET Pre FP1. And it's just a little inline device. It's got a socket on one end, a plug on the other. You slap it in the line between this SM7B and the destination, and it ups the level. And it lets me work this SM7B at a distance that other YouTubers, of course, don't. I mean, most people have them really close and in your face, and I don't like that. And I'm very happy with this SM7B at this sort of distance. Now, all I'm going to do is leave all the settings exactly the same, and I'll take the preamp out of circuit. Now, once I've done that, the level's going to drop to the recorder. And then if we normalize both to the same point and leave some silence, then we should have an indication of the noise at the bottom. And then we can extend that later with some tests using tones, which will be a, a lot more repeatable. So here's a bit of silence. OK, and now I'll disconnect the preamp. The preamp is now out of circuit. That's all I've done. I haven't stopped the recorder at all. So I've just removed that from the cable. So here's a bit of silence now. Now, hopefully, when we review this, we'll discover that once I've normalized the peaks of my voice to the same point, the noise floor should go up and down and we should be able to hear the difference. I'm going to backtrack a little bit because I figure that what I should do is use a decent recorder just to sort of cut out of this anything that the preamp in the camera is doing. And the preamp in video cameras uh, are never going to be the best in the world, are they? So the H6 zoom that I use for a lot of these tests, uh, I thought we'd just press that into action and repeat the test. So at the moment, I'm recording myself on the zoom H6 with the preamp, and I'll do the silence thing. So that's the silence with the preamp. And now I'll take the preamp out of circuit, and we'll do exactly the same test as we did before using the camera preamp. So this should give us a similar increase in the noise floor. At least that's my assumption. 
Well, preamp is out of circuit. The levels have dropped like mad on the zoom meters. So I think the same thing is going to happen. Uh, as to whether we get that sort of 11 dB of difference, uh, time will tell when we actually have a review and see what we can think. So this is me on the zoom without the preamp and I'll now shut up and we'll get the noise. That's part two of the test. Uh, let's have a little review of that and see how that one worked. On the camera, recovering that volume is a noisy experience. But on the zoom, recovering it is much more successful because with or without the preamp, on the zoom, it was 2 dB difference, 39 to 41 dB. So much better on the zoom because the preamp inside the zoom is better. So it's actually not as noisy. But these differences are quite small, so we need to do something a bit more measurable. And basically, we need to get rid of the voice, because obviously I'm trying to speak at the same volume, but there are inaccuracies in doing it this way. So what we're going to do is record some tones and play the tones back and leave some gaps in the tone. So it'll go tone, no tone, tone, no tone. And then we can repeat that for this what I hope is a decent preamp, get some proper results and then we'll use that system to look at the two new Chinese ones. So now we'll try this one, professional mic preamp. And we've got a little small, so it's quite tiny, uh, that's what it says on the side. So let's swap this and do the test and see what happens with exactly the same settings. So there we go, that's the new preamp in circuit. Um, I haven't changed any of the settings, I've just swapped that imperative audio preamp for the new one. It's in circuit, so we can have a look and see what the differences in level are. And we'll do the test, as, test again. The output level of this preamp is a bit lower, so I'm going to take it out of circuit and repeat the test with no preamp to give us a sort of base level. The other one, um, same idea, plug in the socket, uh, but a square design. So let's put this one in circuit and see how it gets on. This preamp has actually got more gain than that tubular design, so we'll see how that reflects in the figures. Just to verify the results, I'm going to record this section on the SM7B with the imperative audio preamp, plugged in in the way that I do all the videos, and then what I'll do is I'll swap the preamps over, I'll adjust the normalisation level so that the peaks are at the same point, and leave some silence so you can listen to the noise in the background when I'm not speaking. So this is the imperative audio preamp and I'm going to shut up. Okay, now all I'm going to do is swap this one for the tubular preamp. 
So we're now on the unbranded preamp and we're talking in the same sort of level, exactly the same system. I've just swapped the imperative audio preamp for the little cheap Chinese one. So that's a bit of silence. Now we'll swap to the rectangular one. And now we're on that rectangular one. So let's have a listen to what this one sounds like with a little bit of silence. So there we go. Three preamps. We've got some figures and we've got some audible noise that we can listen to and try and relate those figures to. So we've tried three different preamps, same microphone in all cases, and we'll add a bit of a look at the waveforms that are coming out of the machine so we can see the sort of noise content that each one now has. And it's produced some rather unexpected results, to be perfectly honest. This thing costs less than £10. And realistically, it's noisy and it doesn't do a particularly good job. Um, so I'm going to discount that one. But this one, which costs less than £20, uh, does as good a job as that imperative audio one that I bought that costs a lot more. Uh, I can't find anything different between this and the imperative audio one. I chopped out the silence on the imperative audio and this Chinese unbranded one and I joined those two bits together and the noise sounds exactly the same. It measures exactly the same. Um, realistically I can't fault this. Um, it appears to be transparent. It doesn't have a, any particular tonal change on the signal. It's really cheap and it works really really well for less than 20 quid. Um, a really useful get you out of trouble gadget. I really have no idea why this is so good but it is. So there we go. I hope this was uh, useful, maybe a bit intriguing, but realistically it was a surprise to me as well. I didn't really expect the any of these to perform as well as they've done. So um, it's been a bit of a learning experience. Anyway, you all look after yourselves. Have a good week. Take care. See you soon.